Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Robin. Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Hi, everybody. How are you all today? I hope it is well. If uh, I, I suspect there might be some of you without power this morning. I know there's a few people out there running around that uh, uh, a good part of um, uh, Massachusetts and, uh, and <clears throat> Rhode Island uh, don't have a lot of power. So uh, if you are without it, it um, let us, uh, we'll pray for you. Like, <laughs> hope you don't mind if you water your garden. Nothing sounds more perfect, Vicky. That sounds great. The, um, the, I, yeah. Good morning, Amy. I hope you're well. That's, I'm so glad to see you here. Priscilla, glad you're here. Yvette, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. How are you all? Good to see you. In your little digital faces. So I trust that, uh, uh, you know, we are, we are gathering this Wednesday, uh, and that that it is uh, um, a rich day for you. Like I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm praying for that. I think that uh, there's some goodness uh, that can come in this day, and that uh, that you might have it. Uh, not tomorrow, not yesterday, not but right in this day. Um, good morning, Deb Votran. How are you? Good to see you. Good morning, Irene. Glad you are here. Hello, everyone. So glad that so glad that you're joining us. Uh, that as we as we gather to journey together, uh, this is uh, the fifth day of August. I'm still blown away that it's August. I don't know about you, but I, I don't know if you're kind of taking. Yeah, I have been able to ride the rhythm of this. Uh, in this year in some sort of way, but it, I, I mean, it may have feel more like a bucking Bronco to you than uh, to, you know, to you and, and to me, but uh, the rhythm of this year, uh, you know, that, that we're, we're accustomed to the rhythm and the cycles of life and, and man, this rhythm has not uh, has not come together for all the reasons that we're coming, that we are, we're finding ourselves. And so, uh, so it is this uh, this day. Good morning, Diana. Great to have you here. Um, so we want to. So I want to talk this morning about one of these moments of Bible where the rhythm of all the things uh, comes undone, and uh, what what the invitation is in the in this day. Because I think it's the same for the invitation of our days. Uh, as it was uh, way back when, and what Bible is speaking to in this time, uh, and uh, you know this this is uh, this is um, uh, keyed off of you know one of the great hymns that you you might you might sing. It's uh, it's actually Robin's favorite hymn, everybody. So we could actually sing it for her if you want. But it's the it's the hymn "Here I Am, Lord." It's based off of that. I, I'm just kidding. It's not really Robin's favorite hymn, uh, but uh, but it is a uh, critical piece of scripture as we work through this. So, so here's the story that on this uh, that it it begins with the year that King Uzziah died. Is this it begins the sixth chapter of Isaiah, and now what we find here is that the entire journey. The entire arc of Scripture, really up to this point, I mean, the entire book up until you get to about the sixth chapter of Isaiah, is a particular cycle. And that cycle is, and, and on, whether it's on a tiny level with kind of Adam and Eve, or whether it's on a larger level with David, or whether it's on a greater level with the nation of, of Israel, is that there's kind of this rhythm that gets going. And the rhythm is this that the Israelites will want to have a relationship with God. They'll do some things to, to do that, and God will pledge his undying love to them, and then they will screw it up. 
And then they'll go back and they'll make some sort of penitence or some sort of way in which the relationship will be healed and, be, and they'll come back to God and then they'll go along for a while and then they'll screw it up. And that this rhythm repeats itself again and again. And really, the, the whole journey of Bible from Genesis to Isaiah is largely a, a long series of this cycle coming together. All of the rules, all of the regulations, all the stuff that you get, all of the, the commandments, all of the mitzvah that we find, and they're all different ways of coming back and healing the relationship with God when, we've, when the people of Israel mess it up. That's what happens. Like if you, want, if you want the kind of the meta story of Bible up until Isaiah, that's kind of it, is that it's this cycle of going along, we make the 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 relationship breaks you're like well we're sorry and you know there's often some things that have to happen for that sorriness to take its place like it's it's not it's not always easily forthcoming but it does show up and then then people end up kind of coming into this moment of uh where they come back in relationship with god and that's, you, we get all, all of our covenants that we get in Bible, all of this stuff. It all comes up. However, we get to Isaiah, which is somewhere near the middle of the book. And what we encounter is this different thing. And it is in this year that King Uzziah died when, Jesus, when, uh, when, when uh, God shows up with a different idea. In the, in the ninth chapter and a couple chapters on, he'll say, your sacrifices are no longer sweet to me. And like, now that line is like, a, that's, like a, that's like a heart stopper, man. Like, what do you mean? Our sacrifices are no longer sweet to you because that's the only thing that's ever gotten us out of trouble ever is that we work harder, we pray harder, and we do better, and we get a better hair coloring, and we look and we look smarter, and we get a, get a better suit, and we lose a little weight, and we make the sacrifices, and we get ourselves to the point where the world is better, and where we're better, we're in better relationship, we do some marriage counseling, we do whatever we have to do, we work a little harder to get the job done so that we are in relationship again, you and I. Like, that's what, that's the, that's the, the story of Israel and God up until this point. And then God says, those sacrifices that I used to think were so sweet, that were so awesome, yeah, they stink now. Yeah, they stink. And the people of Israel are stopped. And, that, and it is this call of Isaiah that's going to speak into this new reality uh, that that happens in, in in the entire story. There's this whole new reality, and the new reality is this: that Isaiah is called, and in the call of Isaiah, Isaiah ends up with this moment of where he stands before and sees the vision of the throne of God. He sees the angels, he sees the seraphim and the cherubim and the whole thing, and it's just beautiful. And he says, stands before and says, "I am a man of unclean lips." I am a man of unclean lips. And one of the angels comes down and touches his lips with a fiery coal from the altar of God and says, you are no longer a man of unclean lips. You are now, and now go and say these things. Which is to say, in, in this, if, if we really kind of, kind of look, in, look, look into this, is that Isaiah has been a product, I mean, Isaiah is a product of his culture, just like every, every one of us. Isaiah is a part of the world in which he's been, Isaiah has been a part of this cycle of we, we're in relationship with God, we're in relationship with good things, then we break that relationship, then we kind of make some sacrifices and we get back. This, this uh, earn our way into heaven kind of relationship that has been, earn our way into God's good graces relationship that has been established. And what happens in this chapter, this moment, this this, this big opening salvo of uh, of Isaiah, is that all that goes away, and that Isaiah is called up to speak a new truth and a new reality, and this is what it starts with, and this is why this is, and this is what I think is so pertinent to our day and age. And I know, I know we're going a long way around the barn to get to this, uh, to get to, to the point today, but I, I feel like we've got to set it up. We've got, you gotta, you gotta be able to see how, how radical 
our world, the worldview is and how big a shift of a worldview uh, invitation this is in this time of cataclysm that, that Isaiah is being catapulted into. Because in our time of cataclysm, in our time of the rhythms being disrupted, of our times of, you know, because King Uzziah dies is the end of the long, of a, of a whole long reign of kings. Now there'll be other kings and all the other, but they won't look like the kings of the, the kings before them. They won't look like this is a whole new thing. And whether we're in a whole new thing or not, I'm going to submit to you that in, we're in the middle of a storm right now. In the middle of that storm that offers us, whether it's a macro, micro, I don't need to solve that and you don't either. But what we need to know right here and right now is the rhythms of our world have been disrupted. And we stand in this place where the, the way in which we would get back into relationship, the way in which we would we would get it all get it all right again, like a lot of us can't do that. You know, for some of you, it's a, you know, it's a glass of wine and a brownie or it's a trip to TJ Maxx or it's a, or, you know, some of us will, will throw some stuff on top of that. Some of us, it's a, it's a trip or it's a, it's a great meal or it's a walk or whatever. But there's this way that we, do we always kind of restore our okayness, you know, don't we? We do. We have all, we all have our ways in which we restore our okayness and they're not bad. I'm not suggesting they're bad, but I'm suggesting they only go so far. And what Isaiah calls is this, and this is uh, this is Len Sweet's translation, which I just fell in love with when I saw when I saw him uh, uh, put it up the other day, and I wanted to share it with you, because he says this is what he says when you in, when you're encountering the high throne of heaven, when you're counting the really real, when you encounter the great truth, and you this is what and and you are stuck in this old pattern, this old pattern of trying to get it get get back. To interrelation, you know, that interrelationship by by working a little harder, by working a little harder. And we're stuck in that relationship. He says, this is what it's like, and this is what we're invited to. He says that there are people that, he, this is from the 6, this is Isaiah 6, 9 and 10. Hear and hear, but do not understand, but they do not understand. See and see, but not perceive. God's messages will only dull their minds and deafen their ears and blind their eyes. No wonder they won't see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their minds. Turn back and be healed. Now that sounds harsh, but I want to suggest to you, we all have been in this cycle of blindness I want to suggest to you, we've been in this cycle of blindness. We've been in this cycle of, of our, the rhythms of our days have allowed to make us blind. And that doesn't make us bad people. It doesn't make us evil people. It makes us, the, it, it, it simply open, it doesn't make us have to go, you know, beat our breast and throw ashes on our head. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. That's not, that's not something to feel bad about. You know, if you want to feel bad about things, call me later and I'll tell you something you can feel bad about yourself about. But no, I'm just kidding. But but this what I'm saying is, this is this it is it is a part of our of our spiritual condition when we end up in the rhythms of things and the disrupting of the rhythms, actually offers us this uh, this uh, notion to actually hear and to actually see and to to sharpen instead of the and instead of and open instead of have the dullness of our mind take over, that that when we're confronted with the really real. When we're confronted with the lack of a paycheck, with the with the possibility of homelessness, or with those around us lacking a paycheck, or the possibility of homelessness, you know, we can catapult ourselves into worry. We can work harder. We can try to resurrect the old rhythm. Uh, we can we can do all those things, but that what this invites us to, I think, is this motion moment when we can begin to see anew. Any of you have ever had this, and, and I, I want to think of it this way, that, uh, that we are largely a people who are house blind. Do you know, that if you, do you know this notion of house blindness? Have you ever heard of this before? Um, and, and, you know, um, every great reality TV show is basically, or, or, uh, or HG, sorry, HGTV show is based on the idea of house blindness. Is that, you know, uh, Chip and what's her name kind of walk into the home and say, Oh my God, I can't believe they lived with this and that like that and like this like that. And they, da, da. But, the, but the people who lived there walked in and they became house blind 
they were house blind. You know, how many of us walk down the street and see, you know, an addict lost in their addiction right there, right there, and, and forget, and forget that that's a human being? How many of we see somebody who's homeless and forget that that's a human being? We see somebody freaking out over what's going on, and then we know that that's a human being. That was a beloved little child of God that came into this world as a baby, was cuter, probably cuter than you and I was when they were born. Like that, you know, and, and that's not, and again, this is not a shame thing. Not a shame. Like, if you're taking any shame away from this, give it back because it's not yours to take. That's that's something else. This is about a blind, This is about a, a new way of seeing, and that the the breaking of these rhythms have offered us a new way to see the world. Have offered us a new way, a, an opportunity to look at our house and to say, "Huh, there are spider webs up on there. Let's let's clean some of them suckers off." Huh, this does need a new paint job. Huh. We do need we do need to look at, at some of the ways in which we are living, because and because the thing about house blindness is that it's it's simply a self referential thing. It's like this is the way things are, and this, thusly this is the way things always shall be. And when we break the rhythms of our days, and the, as they have been, when we break the, these things, you know, as I said, as I started the stream, some of you might have woke up without power this morning. I know some some of us here woke up without power this morning. That those moments. You know, uh, those, uh, those moments, are there moments of breaking the rhythms of things, the expectation that we're going to flip the switch and the switch is going to come on. They're not lost. They're ways to break the rhythm of our kind of sacrifice uh, mentality that we get ourselves into. That if we just work a little harder, we just want a little more, we just give, get, you know, we can get the things we want, we can do the things we want, we can be the things we want, we can be prettier, smarter, faster, you know, you know, more, more beautiful, more sexy, more all the things. Friends, friends, the beauty and the invitation to this age is that we can hear and understand that we can see the world for what it is. We can see that every terrified set of eyes that's behind a mask is a, is a human being that so desperately needs love and is lost in a, world of, in a world of fear. Now, this is not a judgment on masks. Don't hear that. Don't hear what I'm not saying. This is, a, this is about, the, uh, about the breaking of the rhythms of the world that we're in and about the ability to see the world as it is or see the world a little more maybe as it is or see, see the world simply through the through the, as uh, through as great as uh, sister teresa says you know if you really want to see if you really want to see really and and the, and she she actually gives great cautions before she suggests this she says but if you really want to be opened and you really want to see pray to see as god sees pray to see as god sees now we're not all we're not all built for that kind of that kind of high, you know, high mountaineering of the spiritual life. But I would suggest to you that the breaking of this time is not that is not uh, the time to to double and triple down on the on our old ways of being, but it is the time to open up and to and to step into the new ways of being and to and to break our house blindness. To break the house blindness of all the things that we've been doing just because we were doing them. To break the house blindness of the things that we're, we've, we've, all, we've looked at and always knew needed to be changed, but we never, never, uh, just have never gotten around to it. Or the things that seem to be oppressing us or seem to be closing in on us and we don't even quite know why or we don't even quite understand where they come from. So, I, so you know, I, so today I'll give you a little bit of, a, of an assignment if you're, if you're up for it. Uh, pray that prayer someday, you know, or, and just and just ask for it today. It says, Lord, help me see as you see today a little bit. Lord, help me see as you see. Help me hear and hear and understand rather than not understand. Let me see and see and perceive rather than not perceive. Let my mind not be dull, but let it let the iron sharpen iron. Let the let the the truth of my life continue to sharpen deeper truths of my life. Let open my ears rather than deafen them and take the scales from the blindness of my eyes. I want to invite you, really, pray this prayer today and just see what happens. See what happens. Say, see what happens when you say, let, Lord, let me see as you see. And let the, uh, let the house blindness of our days and our life fall away. 
All right, friends, uh, that's my thought for you today. Uh, I hope you are uh, you are keeping well in this time. Uh, I know we went we went a little long today, but uh, you know we had it. You know, there's sometimes you got to get the bar, you got to get the hay out of the out of the loft. You know, like it takes a little work. So, uh, but I I, uh, I I hope you uh, I hope you are well and you're keeping well. Uh, if you find yourself tonight, um, uh, I without. Uh, um, Without entertainment uh, or or want to deepen your journey, uh, we are on the second installment of our four of our four night uh, study with on on Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Uh, so we, what we do is it's a Zoom study, and the the uh, event is on our Facebook page with the Zoom link in it. Um, or you can message me, and I can send you the Zoom link if that's if that's too much. But um, but it's there, and you can just put just cut and paste that into the browser, and and you're off to the races to join us at six o'clock tonight. Uh, what we do is we off we watch about a 20 minute video, and then we'll have some kind of guided discussion with that, and then and that's it. So it's a it's a pretty low bar to entry. Uh, we're it it kind of it's uh it's a it's a uh, it, it's proving to be a powerful study. So I hope you will uh, if you want to be a part of that, please come and uh, and avail yourself of that. Um, and uh, with that have a great and beautiful day you know pray pray that you may see as god sees and that uh and that the the house blindness of our days might fall away so that we can see those those pure and good projects uh not to earn our way back into god's grace but to to uh to be built in a, as a house uh that can hold the spirit all right friends Peace and grace to you all.